20 para las 7 nos empezaron a balancear, nos empezaron a balancear ahí enfrente de, de la puerta principal. Y nomás veía uno cómo caían los compañeros, o sea, nos disparaban como si, como si nada, o sea, que tú mismo veías cómo caía tu compañero a, al lado tuyo, ¿no? Entonces, lo que hicimos fue escondernos con ellos. El día de hoy nos acompañan miembros del Comité Ejecutivo de la Fora en Minnesota y miembros del Comité Ejecutivo de la Fora en Kansas City. Los compañeros han venido a solidarizarse con el movimiento democrático de la Fora. We came down uh, now to get a first hand look of what's going down here and find out how we can develop a stronger, more solid solidarity with our Mexican workers. The next question was, why do we want to support the Mexican workers? And I told them, if we don't support them, then who knows, maybe in time we might be going through the same conditions they are with the uh, conditions they have to work under. Cuando el compañero murió, nos unimos todos y juntamos nuestras manos y nosotros dijimos desde ese día que las manos que Cleto unió no se separarán jamás. Hemos ido a extender esas manos que Cleto unió más allá de las fronteras, eh, a Estados Unidos, a Canadá, a Brasil. Nuestras manos como trabajadores es lo único que tenemos. For the big corporations, crossing into Mexico is like going back in time. As this business association video put it, Your company can bring raw materials or components into Mexico, where they can be assembled by one of the lowest cost labor forces in the world. The minimum hourly rate is somewhere in the neighborhood of 55 cents per, per hour of direct labor today. That's typically about what's been running for the past two years. Mexican wages and benefits are more than three times lower than Hong Kong and Korea, almost four times less than what they are in Taiwan, and 20 times less costly than in the United States. The number of U.S. plants in Mexico has more than tripled in the past 10 years. On the average, a new one opens every business day. Mexican workers for most of America's biggest companies make every conceivable product to sell back in the United States. The savings in labor costs goes not to lower consumer prices, but to raise corporate profits. A decade of increased U.S. operations has meant more poverty for Mexican communities. To please the big U.S. and Mexican companies, the government has imposed wage controls helping to reduce the basic wage from about $7 per day in 1982 to less than $4 per day now. Most workers can only afford one or two room shacks shared by six to ten people, usually without plumbing, electricity, or telephone. On $4 a day, the few people who find jobs with U.S. companies don't have enough money to support local businesses and create jobs for other people. In fact, with prices for most goods similar to those in the U.S., workers generally cannot even buy the products they make. Families and communities are torn apart as workers seeking a living wage must immigrate to the United States. The companies often dump toxic waste on nearby land and into the water supply and ignore basic standards for health and safety on the job. El ruido rebasa los 110 decibeles. Esto ha producido bastantes hipocusias a todos los trabajadores. Con lo que refiere al calor, también las condiciones son muy detrimentes, ya que rebasa hasta los 30 o 40 grados, sin que se les permita siquiera ir al baño a tomar agua. La rapidez con que avanzan las unidades eh, pone en riesgo eh, a los trabajadores. La mayoría de los trabajadores de esta área no recurren a los servicios médicos por, eh, pues porque todas las salidas al médico, eh, los reportes de este tipo de, de cosas de la salud, eh, pues provocan que haya eh, represión. For years, workers at Ford's Cuauhtitlan plant have protested poor working conditions, pay cuts, and the firing of elected local union leaders. Yet the National Labor Federation, 
The CTM has supported the company's actions. The CTM is not an independent union organization, but an official arm of Mexico's ruling political party. It provides professional thugs to attack workers who resist exploitation by their employers. The Ford workers decided that, beginning January 8, 1990, they would report for work but stand idle by their machines until the company and CTM respected their rights. But CTM buses brought in hundreds of armed men to put down this protest. Este, despiadadamente por seis personas desconocidas, ajenas al, a las instalaciones. Este, les pregunté por qué lo golpean. Llegó una persona que dijo ser coordinador de Héctor Uriarte y le dijeron, ¿este qué? Dice, ese también hay que golpearlo. Y nos empezaron a disparar. Hubo infinidad de heridos, todos corrimos, nos protegimos. Inclusive yo estuve protegido tras una palmera porque los balazos pasaban muy cerca, me silbaban cerca los balazos. Vi, vi caer a varios compañeros heridos en los pies, en, en, un, en, en un hombro, inclusive un compañero, Cleto Nigmo, que cayó herido en, con una bala en el estómago, en el abdomen, que posteriormente no se pudo recuperar y desgraciadamente falleció. A few of the intruders were captured by workers and turned over to the news media for questioning, still wearing the Ford uniforms they had been provided. Workers later obtained Mexican Social Security records showing that many of the gunmen were hired by Ford just two days before the attack. Estas personas, por ejemplo, fueron de alta, fueron dado de alta el 6 de enero del 90 y los dio de baja la empresa el 2 de febrero del 90 después de que cumplieron su cometido. For months, the Ford workers took their case to the company and the Mexican government. But it was the victims of the attack who were punished. About 800 members of the Ford Workers' Democratic Movement were fired, while the officials who ordered the attack were never charged. I am surprised that you would uh, conclude that Ford management would provide uniforms to non-employees of Ford Motor Company. Management was not involved, they were not employees of the company, and management assisted in no way. Protests spread across three countries as Ford workers in Mexico, the United States and Canada wore black armbands on the same day to commemorate the murder of Cleto Nino. There was almost 100 percent participation, which not only showed support, but it gave our workers an understanding of the struggle that was going on down in Mexico. Outside the Mexican plant, workers joined in a prayer service with Cleto Nigno's family. Under pressure at home and abroad, the Mexican government was forced to let the Ford workers vote on whether to switch from the CTM to another union. Thousands of police were sent to stop workers from giving leaflets to others arriving on buses and to stand guard as workers voted not by secret ballot, but out loud in front of company supervisors. Workers were threatened with firing if they didn't vote for the company's choice. More than a thousand workers put their jobs on the line by voting for democratic change. But massive fraud put the CTM ahead by 200 votes. Que más de 500 trabajadores de la Ford no se les permitió votar. Hubo una serie de gentes que sin ser trabajadores eh, con credenciales falsas se les permitió votar. Pero me parece de todos modos una jornada muy digna porque fueron 1110 trabajadores que a pesar de todas las presiones emitieron su voto en contra de la CTM por un sindicalismo diferente. In recent years, there have been many democratic movements in Mexico by the workers who make Corona and Modelo beer, by clothing and textile workers healthcare employees, airline workers, nuclear and oil workers,
farm workers and family farmers, miners and steel workers, rubber workers, and public workers such as university employees and school teachers. While big corporations siphon off Mexico's wealth, they use their power to avoid paying the taxes needed for education and other public services. For teachers, that means salaries of only $70 per week, classrooms with 40 to 80 students, and few materials to work with. In recent years, strikes by as many as half a million education workers have forced the government to grant some small raises and to replace a few leaders of the government-controlled teachers' union. Teachers are also challenging plans to change what is taught in the schools. They say the government is not really trying to improve education quality, but to provide obedient, cheap labor for the transnational corporations. Que hablamos de calidad en cuanto a que el alumno realmente haga uso de su libertad, de que sea consciente, que sea crítico, que sea reflexivo, que le diga al maestro, maestro, no estoy de acuerdo contigo por esto, señor presidente, usted en su discurso dice esto, pero la realidad en que vivimos es otra. Bueno, ahí ya no se habla de calidad, ahí ya se habla de gente rebelde. En the past decade, more than a hundred Mexican teachers have been killed for opposing government policies. In the eyes of millions of teachers and other citizens, democratic change requires a complete overhaul of Mexico's political system. One party, the PRI, has been in power for more than 60 years. President Carlos Salinas's party hands out money in certain communities in return for political support. And when necessary, elections are simply stolen. Observers are often physically thrown out before the votes are counted. Many workers are required to go to the polls to vote for the PRI or lose their jobs. Poor people are paid to be taken from precinct to precinct to vote repeatedly, and dead people are given ballots while certain live ones can't seem to qualify. In 1988, an opposition leader, Cuauhtémoc Cárdenas, appeared to be defeating Salinas for the Mexican presidency as returns poured in. But PRI leaders control the nation's election commission, and they claimed that the computers had broken down. A week later, Carlos Salinas declared himself the winner, although the votes for many precincts were never made available. When working people protest election fraud and economic policies that benefit the rich, the PRI responds with violence. Yet citizens in dozens of communities have had the courage to physically take over town halls when PRI officials refused to admit defeat in local elections. Soldado, amigo, no protejas al enemigo. Soldado, amigo, no protejas al enemigo. Many Mexicans have also sought to promote democratic change by building international alliances with working people in the United States, Canada, and other countries. Workers have taken part in conferences and visits to each other's communities. They've discussed the corporation's program known as free trade or economic integration, which forces countries to compete on the basis of which has the lowest wages, environmental standards, and social programs. Because that's a competition in which all workers lose, they've argued that real prosperity and security will come only when labor standards, environmental protection, public services, and political rights 
are brought up everywhere to the highest possible level. Nosotros pensamos que en primer término quienes se beneficiarán con este tratado de libre comercio son las empresas transnacionales que quieren seguir manteniendo el control por sobre los trabajadores a toda costa. Lo que nos ha traído todo este proceso de integración económica ha sido recortes en los contratos colectivos, este, eh, topes salariales, eh, intensidad en, en los ritmos de trabajo, eh, descuidos sociales en, en el trabajo y en, en el conjunto de la población. Un país más grandote, donde haya una libertad de comercio, pero no haya una libertad para poder eh, tener acceso a este mercado por los bajos salarios. Workers in Canada, where free trade with the United States was enacted in 1989, say they are now having to defend their national health care system, which provides affordable quality coverage to every citizen. Multinational corporations argue that because the system is overseen by the government, it interferes with free competition. A Medicare system that's second to none uh, I'm talking about our, our pension programs, our Canada-wide pension programs. You're going to see them, in my opinion, absolutely uh, destroyed in the long term. And I believe that's a part of the right-wing agenda. And we all know what that means. Uh, uh, if you have, you get. If you don't have, too bad. For Americans, continued low wages in countries like Mexico mean job losses and pay cuts in U.S. industry, which in turn means less money to support workers in the service and public sectors. I got transferred from Lima Engine Plant because of uh, economic distress. They sent the work out somewhere else. They sent the work to uh, Mexico. Some of it went to Brazil. So I've been there, and I know when you're talking about a job and you're unemployed. We don't want to see Ford closing their factories in Mexico, but what we want to see Ford is to pay a uh, high enough wage so the products that are being built by the workers, that those same workers can afford those products. That way, the competitive edge that Ford now uses as pitting the U.S. workers to the Mexican workers would not be there. But the wages they pay them, they can't possibly maintain a family. And that's all we ask. If everyone could come down here and just see the banners and listen to these people, they would try and understand that the Mexican worker is not taking their job. It's Ford Motor Company. Los objetivos son comunes eh, porque nosotros también luchamos por tener un empleo, por tener mejores condiciones de trabajo, por tener como decimos una vida digna. A donde quiera que estemos, a donde quiera que vayamos, vamos a extender esas manos para que las agarren otros compañeros y luchen con nosotros y nosotros con ellos.